But first, here's my take. Donald Trump has seemed largely uninterested in foreign policy. He got excited briefly when he thought he could win a Nobel Peace Prize and hype the danger of an imminent North Korean attack so he could then play the peacemaker. When it became clear that a deal was not to be had easily, Trump lost interest and scarcely mentions the subject anymore. Beyond North Korea, his foreign policy has largely been one of subcontracting, a familiar style for a real estate developer. Middle East policy is farmed out to Israel and Saudi Arabia. Policy toward left-wing regimes in Latin America, Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua have been delegated to saber-rattlers like John Bolton and Marco Rubio. The rest of Latin America is dealt with solely through the lens of immigration. In other words, subcontracted to Stephen Miller. The one common aspect of Trump's foreign policy, however, has been that abroad it has provoked a vigorous nationalist response. Take China, where the government has gone on the offensive and denounced what it sees as America's aggressive trade demands. Beijing's state-controlled television network recently featured a commentary tying American tactics to previous foreign efforts to subjugate China. After 5,000 years of wind and rain, what hasn't the Chinese nation weathered, the anchor said. If you want a trade war, we'll fight you until the end. In Iran, the Islamic Republic has been able to withstand the economic storms caused by U.S. sanctions so far because it has been able to pin the blame on Trump's anti-Iran strategy, not the regime's economic mismanagement. Washington has always underestimated nationalism, especially in Iran. Many of Iran's foreign policy moves stem from its geopolitical position, not some fundamentalist Shiite ideology. Even allies are becoming more assertive and anti-American. In 2015, before Trump's election, 66% of Mexicans had a favorable view of America. By 2018, that number had dropped to 32%. Confidence in the U.S. president plummeted in that same period from 49% to 6%. The pattern recurs almost everywhere. In Canada, confidence in the U.S. president went from 76% in 2015 to 25% in 2018. In France, it's worse, from 83% under Obama to single digits under Trump. In fact, in a recent Pew survey of 25 countries, only two places expressed greater confidence in Trump than they did in his predecessor, Russia and Israel. Yet other countries are simply following Trump's advice. In his 2017 speech to the UN General Assembly, Donald Trump called for a great reawakening of nations, urging countries to use patriotism and self-interest as their sole guides in foreign policy. Trump's North Star has been to celebrate a narrow conception of national interest, reject the idea that there are larger international interests, and by implication, to denigrate the idea of cooperative win-win solutions. The Chinese, the Iranians, and so many others are simply doing what Trump urged. And since the U.S. is still the world's leading power and Trump's style has been aggressive and undiplomatic, the easiest response abroad is a nationalist, anti-American one, feeding public anger, stoking bad historical memories, and locking countries into a win-lose mindset. It's a world with more instability, less cooperation, and fewer opportunities for America. And it is the direct logical consequence of Donald Trump's philosophy of America first. For more, go to cnn.com slash Farid and read my Washington Post column this week.